The Minnesota Rocker just defeated Paris Legion to move on in the tournament here at Call of Duty Atlanta. We had a chance to catch up with both coaching staffs. Here are their thoughts. Tell me about what you're telling the team, uh, particularly in between games, you know, especially going into Search and Destroy, uh, going into Domination. What are some of the words of encouragement and also some advice that you're giving to the players? I mean, our practice leading up to this event and our homestand has been very, very good ever since the start of the game. We know our skill level, and we know when we're playing at the top of our game, we can take maps versus phase, we can take maps versus Chicago. So as long as we're playing to our full potential, uh, we shouldn't be scared to go up against anyone. Uh, last match didn't go your way, but just tell me some of the takeaways from the weekend overall, in particular the last match. I mean, I think the biggest takeaway is we need to improve on our S&D. Like, we struggled, I mean, we beat Minnesota in the first SD today, but like we, that was morning because we knew what they was doing, so we need to go back, put a lot more time into SD. Like we missed a lot of the time at the start of the game with normal practice, so we've had a lot of catching up to do, so that's definitely the biggest takeaway. Looked like there, there was a lot to talk about, the bomb plan is a good one to talk about. Take us through that moment. Um, yeah, that, that close bomb plan round on the game five was was pretty stressful to watch. <laughs> I mean, they made, they made a good pinch to get around the map and kill the guy with six seconds left on the bomb. Usually someone's not going to be in position to, you know, re-pick it back up and plant it, but I think it was God RX that was there and ready to pick it up, so that's just a super heads up play by him. A lot of people say that SND isn't necessarily a mode that is practiced at length. Is this something that you identify now? Like, how does practice go moving forward in the immediate future? I mean, we've put a decent amount of time in. Like, you can play like just like challenges against other teams, like, just practice, but it's also it is a lot harder than normal practice, like, because it's like, more strategical, like, you don't want to give away what you do, so it's harder to play against the pro teams. But like, it's easy. you can practice it if you put the time in, right? Like, uh, looking at your players and their performances this weekend, what are some of the positives you take away? Um, positives right now, our respawn looks pretty good. S&D in Minnesota, uh, we didn't win one, except for you know the one where there's a the whole controversy. And then here, S&D has looked a little back and forth as well, but we've we've progressively been getting better at it. So as long as we keep improving our S&D and our respawn stays uh, as good as it is now, I think we'll be able to make a push for the best team in the world. What were some of the positives that you take away from the weekend? That we can still hang and the last two events haven't been a fluke because that's what a lot of people think like we are one of the better teams in the league and we can compete with everyone but we just have our inconsistencies what do you feel as a coach of this team going into this weekend there was a lot of all the attention was on every on two teams in particular right atlanta chicago everyone was talking about them do you prefer flying under the radar for your team? Do you think your team would perform better in that scenario? Or would you have liked people to talk about Minnesota more going into this weekend? All the players on our team have always been disregarded their entire career. We're going to come out, we're going to make a statement and put our case for the best team in the world. We want to deprive all the fans of that phase Chicago Grand Final that they all won. After seeing what you saw, a lot of people point to the European crowds as being incredible. We saw London in the last weekend, and uh, the crowd was amazing, right? They were great, they were chanting, they were part of the show, really. Uh, how much does that make you look forward to uh, a home series in Paris? Oh, it's going to be great. Like, we know the French fans from throughout the years, they, they, can, they go crazy, they love it. So I'm super excited, and to have them hopefully on our side supporting us, it's just going to get the team going, and we're a team, once we get going, we'll beat anyone. Um, one thing I will say is I was very impressed by the support, particularly in Minnesota. They showed the watch party on broadcast, and the amount of people that were just watching at whatever hour it was is very, very impressive. So what do you make of the homegrown support from the city of uh, Minneapolis for this team? Yeah, I mean, all the fan support we've we've had up to now has been absolutely crazy, and we're getting more and more fans every day. All the local fans have been showing crazy support, you know, building, like, rocker masks and bringing them to the events. And we had a little watch party yesterday for our first match. It was 8.45 a.m. there, and I think 100-plus people showed up, which is absolutely insane. So thank you to all our fans. Without them, we wouldn't be here uh, doing where we are now.